What's up guys, welcome to Metal Vibes, and today we are going to be ranking the albums of the Italian heavy metal legends, Bulldozer. For some quick background on Bulldozer, they were formed way back in 1980. They had kind of a tumultuous beginning with uh, some of their members having to depart the band to go do military service, but they would send one of their singles to Roadrunner Records in the early 80s, and Roadrunner would go on to release their debut album, The Day of Wrath, which came out in 1985. Definitely a huge Venom influence on this album. It's really lo-fi with guitars that just sound really unpolished and dirty. The drums are kind of messy, but also very natural in terms of their sound and their performance. There's a lot of wild solos and a very noisy feel to it. It's a very wild feel overall, especially on the track Madman, which just sounds like it's about to utterly come apart and is only held together by this lead guitar melody that sometimes crops up. Vocalist and bassist AC Wilde uses a really throaty rasp that kind of sounds like Kronos, but also has a bit more of an aggressive and beefier touch to it, which I really like. Overall, this album just sounds like something you'd hear in a smoky club circa 1986, and it just had drips with atmosphere as you listen to it. It's a really enjoyable uh, sound on here. The performances are also really good. You know, at the time, I guess Bulldozers were kind of branded as Venom clones, and you definitely hear a huge Venom influence here, but I think they were also a bit thrashier than Venom on this album, and that results in some great riffs and songs, courtesy of guitarist Andy Panagata. Uh, the first proper track, Cutthroat, is a particularly killer track with guitar riffs that just sound like a revving motorcycle. And from there, you get some really good diversity. Pretty much every song on here contributes something to the album and stands out in some way. Insurrection of the Living Damned has a really snappy stomp and a catchy chorus, and then a super catchy stomping riff at the end that just fades out. There's also some really cool faster songs like Fallen Angel, which reminds me more of Motorhead, and then The Great Deceiver, which has a bit more of an aggressive approach like Early Bathory. There's some really fun tracks here too, especially Whiskey Time, which starts off with an 80 second drum solo before kicking in with a bunch of thrash riffs, and then a chorus of, it's fucking whiskey time! It's just a drinking anthem, so great. Amidst all the fun, there is some time for some slower and atmospheric moments, uh, particularly the doomier segments of Welcome Death and the closing instrumental, Endless Funeral. That said, you know, generally I don't like closing instrumentals. This one is a little long and coming after a song that's already kind of slow, it kind of makes the back half of the album drag a little bit for me. Some of the riffs here are also a little familiar on this album. It might have sounded fresher in 1985, but in retrospect, uh, some of these riffs just don't always sound the most original and fresh, which uh, hampers my enjoyment just a little bit. This album, uh, surprisingly, was critically panned upon its release. The band even said this was apparently the first album ever to get a zero in both Metal Hammer and Kerrang! magazines. Apparently it sold pretty well though, and for me personally, I like it a lot. It's not perfect, but it's up there with Venom's better material for me. It's got a lot of attitude, it's got a lot of fun riffs, a lot of songs that stand out, and a lot of fun moments. It's just a good overall old school first wave black metal album, I guess, if you want to use that term. Not my favorite of theirs, but definitely one of my favorites. I'll put it in the second spot. All right, so the band would return in 1986 for the album The Final Separation. This was kind of a weird album, uh, similar to the last album stylistically, but there's a few differences that kind of hold it back for me. The production job on here is pretty odd. The bass drum is pretty loud and kind of process sounding, while the vocals sound pretty unpolished. So the production job just kind of sounds at once polished and raw and just makes for kind of a weird approach. The guitars are also really thin, as is the overall sound, which to me saps some of the power out of these songs, and it also saps out a little bit of the atmosphere that was present on the previous album. But my criticisms of this album aren't limited just to the production. I think there's some stylistic issues here as well. The song Don Andrus is a really strange track. It's basically a medley of some pretty cool thrash riffs and then random shouting in Italian. It sounds like the improvised ending of a drunken live performance, so there's some cool energy to it, but it just feels a little silly. Maybe they should have saved it for a bonus track or something. The closing track, The Death of Gods, was uh, a really bold move. It's a 10 minute long, slow, epic song. It, I think, had potential to be good, but for me, it just kind of shuffles along. It's got some cool ideas, but not much progression. And while it does provide some dark atmosphere, I think it's just uh, a little bit too long overall. That said, there are definitely some good songs here that stand out a lot. Ride Hard, Die Fast, and Sex Symbols Bullshit are both really fast and energetic songs. Don't Trust the Saint is probably the best track here. The chorus has these chords that just batter you in the face, 
and uh, the chords are also in sync with the vocals, which is pretty cool. The opening track, The Final Separation, is a neat track. It's got some clean picking interspersed with more blunt chords, which is odd and slightly low energy, but it's uh, a, a unique way to open the album for sure. This album apparently didn't sell very well, and this would be their final album for Roadrunner Records. For me, I definitely don't like it as much as The Day of Wrath, uh, but it does have some good riffs. It's got some good songs. It might not be as fun, the songs are weaker overall, and there's some more missteps, but it's also got a lot of character to it, and honestly, it's not bad. Uh, I'll put it here for now, and we'll see how that shakes out. All right, so Bulldozer would come back in 1987 with the album Nine, and wow, did they come back. <laughs> They got a new drummer for this album, Rob Clister Cabrini, and I think maybe he was just the catalyst they needed to really unleash their potential because this album just slays. Right from the beginning with the opening title track, this just kicks your face in with pure aggressive thrash metal and very aggressive thrash metal at that. I almost get some Morbid Saint vibes from this song. This is just a very fast and relentless album with headbangable riff after headbangable riff, particularly in songs like Misogynist and Heaven's Jail. There's a lot of like what sound like tremolo riffs, which I don't recall the band using before. The vocals are really fast and delivered in a staccato delivery. They just sound maniacal. There's plenty of guitar solos that'll just have you air guitaring, or at least they do for me. Of the songs here, I would say Alona, the very best. It probably best exemplifies the approach taken on this album. It's got these hammering drums, these really crunchy riffs, and these fun gang shouts. Uh, interestingly enough, the song was actually written about a Hungarian porn star, which is kind of a bit of a different approach than the uh, anti-religious and darker lyrics on the previous albums, but uh, to each their own, I guess. Despite the faster and more relentless approach on this album, they still know how to write good songs. The opening track, Nine, has some really glorious chords in the chorus. And then you have kind of weirder songs like the Derby, which has these echoing drums and echoing gang shouts that almost make it sound like a bulldozer's take on arena rock. <laughs> I also like the rapid chuggy pace of this song and kind of the way it slows down and fades out. It's a good little break from the thrashiness of the rest of the album. The Vision Never Fades is a cool track too. It's a heavy mid-tempo song with some really crunchy riffs and gives off some of the same vibes as the earlier albums, which is a cool callback to that style. The production here is raw, but it's more powerful than the debut. And overall, this album is just a complete attack. It's their most intense and least nuanced, but I would say their most enjoyable overall. It's just a blast to listen to, and I would say up there with uh, any other classic 80s thrash album. Very intense, very enjoyable album, and my personal favorite Bulldozer album. All right, so Bulldozer returned just a year later in 1988 with the album Neuro Deliri. This kind of continues the trajectory of the prior album. It's got a bit more of a pronounced thrash influence than the first two albums, but it does feel a bit more restrained, kind of in line with their earlier stuff. AC Wild sounds a little less aggressive here. He uses an approach that's more like his gruff shout from the earlier albums. And interestingly enough, keyboards play a really prominent role here, which almost gives some tracks like a Demu Borgir vibe. <laughs> Closer Willful Death definitely shows that, as does the song Ilona Had Been Elected, which uh, is about the same Hungarian porn star as A Load of the Very Best from the previous album. This is kind of a neat track. It's got those Debu Borgir vibes combined with what sounds like uh, Sodom's faster material. There's some other really cool tracks here too. Uh, Art of Deception is really neat. It's got these wild thrashing riffs with keyboards overlaid on top. The outro of this song is basically an extended instrumental outro. It almost sounds like Children of Bodom to me with how playful the guitars are and how the keyboards and guitars just kind of play off each other. Mors Tua Vita Mea uh, kind of reminds me a little bit more of Nine with its uh, really energetic approach, but then it has this groovy stomp incorporated in it that kind of sounds like crossover thrash. It's a pretty fun song. We Are Italian and Minkins are both just fun speed metal that we would expect from Bulldozer at this point and are executed so well. The production is uh, pretty similar to Nine, uh, maybe a little bit less raw. Interestingly, this is their shortest album at 29 minutes, even though the more epic touches kind of make it feel longer to me. I don't really have too many issues with this album. I would say some spots do just feel a little less energetic than Nine to me. While I do miss the intensity of Nine, I think this is another great record. It's really close to The Day of Wrath for me, but I have to give it to The Day of Wrath because I don't really like keyboards that much, and on this album in particular, I just don't think they were totally necessary for these songs. And I also think The Day of Wrath just has a bit more atmosphere and kind of that first album charm that just, uh, you know, is that inexplicable feeling. 
So following Neuro Deliri, Bulldozer would split up in 1990 and take kind of a weird journey into techno and rap music in the early 90s before reforming in 2008 and releasing their final album, 2009's Unexpected Fate. This uh, sounds like, I guess, what you would expect a comeback album to sound like. It's basically a combination of the styles on their prior albums, but with a more modern sheen. It's a bit louder and less raw than their prior albums, which is fine, it's not too polished, but it, it makes for an enjoyable production job that does set it apart. AC Wilde uses a gravelly shout here that sounds like a bit more of an aged version of his prior stuff. The writing on this album really emphasizes catchy riffs, which often pop up during the choruses. Unexpected Fate, for example, has a really cool melodic lick in it. It sounds like basically Neuro Deliri dragged to the modern age, but without the keyboards. Aces of Blasphemy is another fun song. It sounds a lot like Sodom, and it's got these interesting O's, which uh, is okay. I think they could have been executed a little better, but it does, uh, it does make for an uh, interesting track. Micro VIP is another standout track. The melody during the chorus kind of just plays off the vocals in a way that makes the vocals sound more melodic, which is a neat touch. There's other songs that are more energetic and fast, like Nine, particularly Salvation for Sale and Use Your Brain. And then there's others that kind of keep things interesting with some more off-kilter moments, particularly the track Counter Crusade, which has this high register noodling bass and then some clean picking for a cool touch. The only real keyboards here are thankfully on the instrumental track, The Prediction, which I'm happy because, again, I wasn't a huge fan of the keyboards from the prior album. I also think it was a smart move putting the instrumental before the closer instead of making it the closer. I always think that's a good idea for albums I listen to. Also of note on this album, they had a famous session guitarist, Jennifer Batten, play the leads, which are great, especially the guitar solo on Bastards, which is just phenomenal. Overall, Unexpected Fate just isn't gonna have the same old school mystique as their first four albums. It came out over 20 years after Neuro Deliri did. But that said, I've heard much worse comeback albums than this. Um, I actually almost wanna rank it higher than Neuro Deliri because the songs are just really enjoyable here. But uh, I think Neuro Delirious is a bit more of a unique approach. Uh, I definitely do think this is better than um, The Final Separation, however, so I will rank it higher than that. Yeah, overall, Bulldogs are such a great band. I actually think they're pretty underrated. You really don't hear them mentioned as much as uh, their contemporaries like Venom, Hellhammer, or Bathory, but I think their riffs are at least on par with those bands. I'm glad to see they've started to get a little bit more appreciation, um, which is always cool for older bands. They just started a tour with Deceased, Ares Kingdom, and Demiser, which is a stacked lineup and sure to be a lot of fun. You know, I'm not sure if I'd want to hear a new album for Bulldozer at this point. I'm not sure if they're planning to give us one, but I am glad that they're still around. I'm still glad they're carrying that metal spirit, and I'm really glad for what they've accomplished because I think they have an excellent discography, and even my least favorite album, The Final Separation, is a really enjoyable release in my book. But yeah, that does it for this video, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think of Bulldozer, how you would rank their albums. And if you like this video, please subscribe, please drop me a like. But that does it for now. I'll see you guys next time. Stay heavy.